Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing a video for Jeremy today. This build is for him. They're building a cast iron smelter, and I'm going to be showing how to run this thing and exactly what it is that we're looking at as far as the equipment goes. This right here essentially is where the nozzle is housed. It enables you to quickly disassemble and clean anything if needed or change out a nozzle. This right here is our oil preheat. Now the reason you have to preheat the oil isn't necessarily because of combustion issues. It has to do with the way these nozzles atomize the oil. Okay, so you see that little needle jet? That's what it does when the heat's off. So the heat has to be turned on in order for that to atomize. Okay, and look at that. We are misting big time. So let's get on with it. Well, we got a mist. See the difference? If the oil isn't at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit, it doesn't atomize properly. So anytime you're using an oil, it's best to preheat it. You don't need to do this for diesel, but in this case, we are. All right, fellas, so to get our oil pressure, we're just gonna be using the smallest pressure washer available. You can buy these things at any hardware store. You don't have to gut it like this. I just did it for convenience. And it has a bypass valve connected to it. And I'm gonna show you guys how to use the bypass valve and how to prime the pump. Okay. And to prime it, the first thing we have to do is to close the bypass valve which is this valve right here. And what this does is sends excess flow right back into the intake. Because we need a very specific flow rate, we're able to adjust it by diverting the excess high pressure flow right back into the intake of the system. And the way we dance these two valves together determines the pressure output of the system. So to get it primed, you have to have the bypass valve closed and both the flow valves open. That's step one for priming this thing. A clear hose definitely helps determine whether or not you are getting flow. So let's fire this up. All right, so I've turned it back off and I'm letting this thing heat up until it gets hot. We're primed up and ready to go now. We're at about 200 watts. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing back up with the preheat heated up and we're gonna go from there. I cannot believe how easily that lit right up. Hopefully that camera caught it. Okay, we got some air going now. Little excess. I need to fix this situation. Okay, we've burned off a lot of that residual now. I wish you could see it with the naked eye. The flames are a lot faster. The frame rate of this camera is deceiving. So those flames are moving a lot swifter than they look. You're looking at a distorted frame rate perspective. Turn the pressure up.
uses even more air power. the air down to show how much fuel we're actually burning. We're back up. That's low air. That's actually very impressive. so bright you can't look at it. It starts to blind you like looking at the sun. Yeah, that's crazy how bright that is. The camera ain't really picking it up. But if you stare at that, you turn away, all you see is a sunspot. All right, I shut the test down. Two hundred and forty-seven watts of air is what we were looking at on those last couple of moments of testing. So I hope that demonstrates the importance of preheating the oil on a system like this. The uh, nozzles aren't designed to atomize thick, cold oil. So you're probably going to want to go to the 2.5 on this nozzle. I'll talk to you about the nozzle details. That's kind of proprietary at this point but uh so far i'm going to give you the details on the different types of nozzles that it took to do this jeremy and um we'll go from there i'll have these headed your way within the next few days <laughs> 